What is going on guys? My name is Matt Berger and I'm a tire engineer with Kenda Tires and today I'm going to show you guys how an engineer changes a dirt bike tire. Here we go. So obviously there's not just one way to change a dirt bike tire. Everybody's kind of got their own tips and tricks. So I'm just going to be showing you kind of my tips and tricks, things I've learned over the years changing tires and this is what works best for me. Hopefully it'll help you guys out. All right, step one before we start anything is we want to go ahead and get all our tools laid out here. I always like to have them within arm's reach. That way I'm you know, not running around looking for things. I can just kind of grab and go. We've got our tire pressure gauge. We've got a bead buddy. These are awesome to have. A valve core removal tool. These are super helpful. Our tire spoons. I like to use three. That's the magic number. I use the spoon style. They don't mar up your wheels as much and you're less likely to pinch a tube. A wrench, in this case a 12 millimeter. Of course we've got some Windex for lube. Lastly, I like to wear gloves along with an apron. I find them super helpful. You're not banging up your knuckles and you can kind of stay clean. All right, let's talk about tire changing stands real quick. If you have one, these are awesome. Super, super helpful. I highly recommend it. Now I know a lot of you guys do not have these. So the next best thing, that pretty much anybody can get is a five gallon bucket. Um, you gotta have something to get the tire and the wheel off the ground or you're just gonna be fighting it. Now I know a lot of you guys don't have it so for this video I'm actually gonna be changing the tire on a five gallon bucket just to show you guys it is possible. So we're gonna be doing this on a rear tire. I personally think the rear tires are harder so if you can do a rear you can do a front. So once you go ahead and get it pulled off the bike the first step is we're gonna have to go ahead, get all the air out of the tire, and we're gonna have to break this bead. Go ahead and get that valve core out or just compress it with the screwdriver and go ahead and grab your wrench and take that nut off. Go ahead and get that rim lock loosened up. So once you get this loosened, you wanna back it all the way out to the end and you wanna be able to press this in. Uh, you gotta make sure you do that or you're not gonna be able to get this section of the tire off. Now a lot of times these, you cannot just press them in with your hand. So a trick that really works for me is I like to take a tire iron and first thing I'll take it, I'll kind of get both hands on either side of it and I'll you know, really get some force on it. And for whatever reason, if that doesn't break it, I'll, you know, I'll take a hammer and you know, instead of getting a hammer in there and you know, bashing it into your brake rotor, I'll go ahead and just kind of put this tire iron on it, hit a little farther up and that'll usually break it loose. All right, now that we've got all the air out of the tire and the rim lock loose and broken free, the next step is to pop this bead down and break this bead all the way around on both sides. So a lot of the times you can just start pressing down on it. So if it still will not pop off like it is with me, uh, you can try a couple different things. You can stand on it, which I, I try not to do as much because you can damage your you know, brake rotor here or your sprocket. The next trick I'll show you is actually with some tire spoons, you can kind of get in there and actually break the bead. So we're gonna go ahead, set the wheel on the ground, take two of these tire spoons, spoon side up, go ahead and insert them about an inch away. And then what you can do is just start pressing down on both of them and it's gonna pop that bead off. And then you just go ahead and every couple inches work around until you get you know, a good enough section broken off. Now you can press down on it, work it all the way around, press that rim lock in with your finger, pop that bead down, and then just go ahead and repeat the same thing on the other side. All right, so now that both beads are broken loose, it's time to start popping this tire off. Rule of thumb, you always wanna keep the rim lock at your chest. So you always wanna keep the rim lock in front of you and you wanna start opposite of you. So we're gonna go ahead and take our three tire spoons. We're gonna get that first one in there, get that second one in there, and then the third one, sometimes it's a little tough. You can kind of release some pressure on that second one, pop that third one in there. Once you get that, you're gonna release that middle one, pop that out, and then just kind of move that over, redo the same thing, then take out the next middle one, move that over. And like I said, sometimes you have to release that pressure as you guys can see here, get that tire spoon in, and then re-pop them back over. And you're just gonna kind of repeat this all the way around, you know, taking small bites, taking your time. And then once you're about halfway, you can go ahead and ditch that third spoon and then I like to just finish off the rest of this side just with two spoons moving all the way around that rim until you get that bead popped off. All right so now that this side's popped all the way around we're going to go ahead and flip the tire over and we're just going to repeat the exact same thing on this side. That first spoon in, get that second spoon and then get that third one in and then just take out that middle one, move it over do the same thing, take out the middle one, move it over, and so on. And what we're gonna do here, you gotta keep that rim lock at your chest. Always keep the rim lock at your chest, and we're gonna move around to the right until we're about three or four inches away from the rim lock, and then we're actually gonna go to the start and then move around the left until we're about three or four inches away from the rim lock. So this is gonna allow the rim to actually seat up in the top of the tire, kind of gap down here at the bottom. Now I can take my tire iron, left or right of the valve stem, kind of shove it in there, go all the way down through, and just pull back on it. 
that'll create a huge gap there and now it's really really simple to just kind of get over it press down on that tire kind of go as much as you can sometimes it'll pop off but if you can't you can go ahead set it on the ground and you can just finish pulling that rim out of there so now that you got the tire off this is a good time to go around inspect your wheel make sure there's no cracks or any damages that you need to replace i like to check all the spokes make sure they're nice and tight and then this inner rim strip here um, if you guys don't have one they're fairly inexpensive to buy there's a nice one in here and for whatever reason if you don't want to buy one or you don't have you know the availability to get one you can essentially just take some duct tape or some gorilla tape and run that you know about two layers all the way around and that'll work too so i'm actually going to be reusing the old tube in this tire uh, i went ahead filled it with air made sure there was no leaks i know it's good practice to replace your tubes every time you switch your tires but i know this one hasn't been in there this long everything checked out so we're just going to go ahead and get it back in the tire so the next step is you want to go ahead and take your tube if you're reusing your old one go ahead and put that valve core back in if you have a new one don't worry about it and you're going to want to fill it up with a little bit of air. You want to have just enough air, but not too much air. You can kind of see how much I have in here. And the reason behind this is the more air you have in here, the less likely you are to pinch your tube, you know, it fold over when you go ahead and put that tire back on. Now too much air in here and you're going to have an impossible time putting the tire on. Too little air and you're going to, you know, increase your chances of pinching the tube. All right, so we're going to take our new tire, take any kind of labeling off of it. And what we're going to be doing actually is putting the tube inside of the tire. So just go ahead and start stuffing it in here. A lot of times if the tire is really narrow and it's really hard to get the tube in there, a trick I like to do is you can sit on top of this and it'll open up those two beads and then you can just work it around like this. Now you want to go ahead and check your tire and see if it is a directional tire. This Washougal 2 is not, so we can mount it either way and it's going to be the exact same. So we're going to go ahead and grab our lube. I like to use Windex. You can use, you know, dish soap and soapy water. Anything in a spray bottle like this that's just going to kind of wet and lube that, that side of that tire, that's going to work fine. So we're going to go ahead, lube it up. You cannot use too much of this stuff. So you can cake this stuff on there. The more lube the better. This next step is probably the toughest part of the tire change. So go ahead and rotate that wheel around until you get that valve stem hole in front of you. And then on your tire, grab that valve stem and you're gonna be taking it and pushing it through that hole there. Sometimes you can pop the tube out a little bit, press that through, grab your nut and thread it on, that way we don't lose it. We wanna get as much as this bead onto the wheel as we can before we start spooning it. So essentially I'm just gonna go around and try to press this down and I want to work that bead as far as I can, pressing it down, making sure this stays above. You do not want this to drop down in that, in that well there. So as long as this stays above, and you can just keep working this thing around, any little bit helps. Now you're going to get to a certain point to where you can't do it anymore, and this is where we're going to need to grab our spoons. All right, so with the valve stem closest to your chest and the bead farthest away from you here, I like to just use two irons. And we're gonna do the spoon lip side down. So you wanna be grabbing on to that rim. So just go ahead and just start slowly working this thing around, being very careful here. This is the, definitely the most difficult part. So very carefully, just start working this thing around little by little. A lot of times you can jump up behind it and this makes it a little bit easier. Now a lot of times if you're struggling and you just can't get any farther, the reason's probably that the other side of that bead is popped on, so go ahead, lift up, and you want to make sure that that bead is not seated. And then just keep working this thing all the way around until you get that bead popped on. All right, once you guys have gotten that bead all the way around, it is smooth sailing from here. That was definitely the most stressful and difficult part of the tire change. So let's jump into the next step. So we need to go ahead and get this rim lock in between the two beads of the tire. So go ahead and lean it up against something. You're going to take your two spoons on left and right side of that rim lock. Go ahead and get them under the lip and really pull and press until you get that to pop over. Once you do that, you can take your finger, press up on that rim lock, and then let off on those two spoons, and you should be good to go. All right, now we're going to go ahead, re-lube this side up, go all the way around. Remember, we always want the rim lock right by our waist. We're going to be working opposite of the tire. Three inches over from the rim lock, go ahead and put these tire irons in here. Have about that much in between. Go ahead and take your bead buddy and slide that right in there. It doesn't necessarily have to be on the spoke. That's good enough. 
And what we're gonna be doing is from this bead buddy, we're gonna be working all the way around this side of the tire until we get back to here. I just used two irons. What we're gonna be doing is just putting them in here and working it around. All right, hold up, time out. When you're about halfway done with the tire, stop for a second and look at this bead area where you've come from. If this is up like mine is, that is no good. You need to push this down. This needs to be pushed down into the well of the wheel. That way when you get to the end, you have as much room to get that tire on. You will have an impossible time if this is seated. So make sure you push this down and carry on and just every so often, keep pushing that side down. That is the biggest key when you're putting back on a tire. So then just keep working it around. As you get closer to the end, take smaller and smaller bites. This is not a race. So if you can be right up against that tire spoon, you know, who cares? It's fine, just take small bites. It's gonna get more difficult as you get closer to the end, but the smaller bites you take, the easier it's gonna be. All right, so when you're nearing the end like this, and you got about, you know, three or four inches left, we're gonna go ahead and try to get it all in one go. So go ahead, get your two tire spoons in here. Uh, you want this one as close to the rim lock as you can. Um, so we got a few inches in between here. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna press in on the rim lock. So with that pressed in, go ahead and do your first one, and then your second one, and it's all just gonna... Now if it doesn't quite go and it gets hung up there, all you gotta do is push in on that rim lock, and just kind of mess with it and it'll pop right down in there. Pop our bead buddy out and it's time to put some air in this tire. It's uniform all the way around. That means it's seated. And if we flip it over, we're gonna see the same thing on both sides. Now a lot of the times you'll have a section of the tire that won't seat. What you can do, release all the air, re-break that bead all the way around on both sides. Go ahead, take your Windex and re-lube everything on both sides flip it over, do the same thing on this side, and then re-air it up, and usually nine out of 10 times, it's gonna seat. And then you can just kinda keep repeating that until you get it to seat. So with the tire inflated, we're gonna go ahead and tighten our rim lock back. Now these do not have to be super tight, you just want them snug. So if I go a couple times around, and about right there is good enough. Next, we're gonna go ahead and set our tire pressure. We've got a good amount of air in here, so we're gonna go ahead and let it out. Grab that pressure gauge, and I like to do about 13 PSI. That is your magic number. Next, we're just gonna go ahead and make this finger tight. You don't wanna go ahead and wrench that down because if you do, and the tube moves it all inside the tire, it'll rip the valve stem right off of there. So I like to just take it down right when it touches the wheel, and that's good enough. Throw that valve cap on, and there you have it. One freshly changed tire. Now all you gotta do is repeat those steps, do it at the front, and you guys will be set. Now like I said earlier, I think the fronts are a lot easier. If you can do a rear, and you guys just did this, you will have no problem doing the front, I promise. Now you saw with the bucket, it was flopping back and forth a little bit. Now with the tire changing stand, it eliminates that all completely. So that way the tire's really secure and you can really wrench on it without you know, trying to hold one side. So that eliminates some of that frustration. You know, having three tire irons, valve core remover, little stuff like that, all the right tools make it a lot more stress-free. But like I said, there's not one way to change a tire. I'm not the tire expert. You know what I mean? I've changed a lot of tires, sure. These are my tips and tricks, but there's plenty of people out there that might change a tire way better than me and have other little tips and tricks. So I hope that this video helped you guys out. I just wanted to share what I know. That way, you know, maybe it's a little bit more stress-free on your guys' end when you're changing a tire next time. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing. Go ahead and head over to my channel. Check out my other videos. I do all kinds of different bike builds, bike flips. I'm going to do a lot more tips and tricks just like this video. And thanks again, guys. Seriously, I've had a lot of good feedback. You know, I'm trying to reply to all these comments. It has been awesome, and I have no plans on stopping. I got a lot of bikes sitting behind me. I got a lot more little tips and tricks and how-tos just like this video. And uh, as always, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.